A 1.5 kilogram mass is placed on an incline plane and released from position A. With an initial speed of 2.65 meters per second, the block travels down the incline plane onto a horizontal surface and collides with the spring with a k constant of 80 newtons per meter, which compresses the spring and brings it to a stop. So, first question is going to be, Nick Lightning Friction, calculate the expected speed of the block when it reaches the base of the incline, position B. Okay, so here is just going to be a conservation of energy. So we start with, I'm going to say, energy kinetic initial plus energy potential initial equals energy kinetic. I'm going to call this B. You can say final if you want, but I'm just going to mean here at point B, energy kinetic or energy potential at B. I'm also going to say that this ground is height equals zero. That way the potential energy at B will be zero because potential energy in this case is going to be due to gravity, which is mass times gravity times height. So we have one half mv initial squared plus mass times gravity times height initial equals one half mv b squared. So solving this for the speed of the block at position b, neglecting friction, we're going to be left with v at b squared equals, multiply everything by two, cancel the masses, and we have v initial squared plus gravity times h naught. So then velocity is v naught squared plus g h naught square rooted. You can do that with the calculator on clear. Our initial speed was 1.65, 2.65, good catch. So we have 2.65 squared plus 9.81, which is gravity times the height, which is 0.85, 805 because it's in centimeters and we want to convert it to meters. And then we have 14.91. We'll square root that answer and we get bum 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 3.86. So we have 3.86 meters per second. So that's the answer to part one. Now there's no part two mentioned here, but I'm going to assume that the part two is uh, how much does the spring compress. So you're going to have this come down. And all this energy is then going to be put into the spring, causing it to compress a certain uh, amount delta x. And that's still going to be conservation of energy as well. So we're going to look at this as energy kinetic B, which we know, which we can find. which we, Yeah, we know it. Plus, I'm going to call it energy uh, potential B, which we know is zero, but I'm going to put it there for completeness, equals energy kinetic at C when the spring is complete, as compressed as it's going to be, plus energy, I'm going to call this potential spring, the little s there means because it's energy potential spring due to, and as opposed to gravity, and still for C. I know, really confusing, but bear with me here. Stick with me, you got it. So energy potential at B is going to be zero. Energy kinetic at C, we're going to say it comes to a complete stop. So then we have one half, mv squared, which is the kinetic um, energy from the at point B at the bottom of the incline, and that's going to be one half k delta x squared, and that's just the um, potential energy formula for the spring. Doing a little bit of canceling, we get delta x squared equals mv squared over k. Mass, we know, is 1.5. So we have 1.5. I'm going to leave V squared here because it's still my calculator. And then we know that K was 80 newtons per meter. And that is still in um, SI units, so we're good there. So working this out, we have, go back to squared, times 1.5 divided by 80. And we have 0 0.28, which is a lot, because that's in meters, uh, delta x. That's delta x squared, so it's actually meters squared. And then doing the square root here, second square root, second answer, we get 0.5, I'm going to say 0.53. So here, 0.53 meters. And that's going to tell you how much this spring has compressed when it slides on this ramp with an initial velocity of 
five meters per second. That is 0 0.53, 0 0.53 equals 0 0.53 meters. And the idea here is we just did conservation of energy. We did it here and then at A, and we set that equal to B to find the velocity. And then we set it up over here to find the delta x of the spring. Though if all we wanted was the delta x of the spring, we could just use this point here, set it equal to that point there, and still solved it. Not a big deal. Hope that helped. See you next time.